Hi all and welcome to another guide for Paleo. In this video, we are looking at how to find and hunt Blue Bristol Mugen. Blue Bristol Mugen are the third type of magical creatures that have been added to the game. And like their regular and banded Mugen fellows, they can be found at any time of day but only in Bahari Bay. You recognize them by their white, blue-tipped mane. We have personally only spotted Blue Bristle Mujin in the denser forest of North Bahari. But since every Mujin can turn into the magic version when jumping into and hiding in a flow tree, it's possible to find them in the south as well. We'll cover some of our favorite hunting spots later on. Now, let's quickly cover the general Mujin behavior, since this also applies to the magic version. Mujin can be found patrolling tree-covered areas and once startled, they do not only run away but also search for trees to hide in. Once you chop the tree, the Mujin will appear again and give you another chance to hunt it. It's important to note that Mujin can only hide in medium and large trees. We're not sure if Mujin also spawn in trees, but since other players might have startled Mujin before you, you can often find one or more of them hiding in trees when shopping for wood. But back to the Blue Bristle Mugen, the magic cousin of this elusive creature. Like other magical creatures, Blue Bristle Mugen have a special ability, and that's turning invisible once they have been startled. As you can imagine, this makes the already quite annoying to hunt creature even more annoying to hunt. Now, as with Mujin in general, hunting with at least one other player and with better arrows can make your life a lot easier. But let's look at the best tactics, and a great tip especially for solo hunters. By the way, while the hunter's horn is usually a great tool to track rare creatures, it's pretty useless here as it doesn't reveal magic Mujin that hide in trees. Ideally, you want to play with someone else, and one of you is on tree chopping duty to reveal any hidden Mujin. This will make things easier, as the other player can be at the ready with a drawn bow which can save critical seconds. One good thing to know is that you or the other player who chops the tree will get a share for the kill of any Mujin that was hiding within, even if you don't fire a single shot. Once the magic Mujin has been found, the best ammo to use are dispel arrows, as hitting the Mujin with it will prevent it from getting invisible for a short time, or make the invisible Mujin visible when hit. They also deal the most damage, as they are on par with fine arrows. Try to hit the Mujin as often as you can with dispel arrows before it hides in another tree. Mujin fully recover health when hiding in trees so taking it out before it reaches another tree is key. The other player that was on tree chopping duty should try to swap to their bow as fast as possible, to deal additional damage. Using slowdown arrows to assist the player that uses dispel arrows is a great way to slow the Mugen's movement and give you more chances to land some hits. One thing to keep in mind when using dispel arrows is that the effect only lasts for a limited time. If you don't hit the Mujin repeatedly with Dispel Arrows, they will turn invisible again. Once the magic Mujin has jumped into a tree, it's full rinse and repeat. Blue Bristol Mujin have 90 HP, and it takes a minimum of 5 Dispel or Fine Arrows to take them down. If you use Slowdown or Standard Arrows, you need at least 6. However, we occasionally experience that some hits don't count. By the way, having a better bow does not help with damage, but it offers a longer range and makes it easier to fire arrows at a greater distance. The recipe for dispel arrows can be purchased from Hassian's hunting guild store at hunting level 7 for 2000 gold, and the recipe for the cheaper and more accessible slowdown arrows can already be purchased at hunting level 4 for 500 gold. While slowdown arrows won't prevent the magical Mugen from going invisible or make them visible when hit, they do help by slowing them down, and also mark the Mugen with a green cloud of smoke, which makes following it a lot easier. 
and that alone can already be a game changer, as following an invisible Mujin can be challenging, and it's easy to lose sight of them, or to not get enough hits in before they find a new tree. Another tip is to listen for the directional sound that invisible Mujin make. It's like a magical whooshing sound that can help you locate it. And if an invisible Mujin runs close to you, you can also see footsteps on the ground. If you play alone, then using slowdown arrows is likely the better option. You will still be able to follow the invisible Mujin and, if lucky, have more time to get all your hits in before it reaches a new tree. We suggest clearing some trees in the area where you located the Mujin and try to use the terrain to your advantage, which might allow you to steer it in a direction that gives you more time to shoot at it. Now, while Dispel and Slowdown Arrows are certainly of great help, it's still very challenging and time-consuming to hunt Magical Mujin alone. Chopping trees, swapping tools and ammo and keeping track of the Mujin can get very hectic. Now a great tip for solo players and everyone else. There's a way to take them down a lot easier if you're lucky, and that's at our favorite spots for hunting Mujin where we also find Blue Bristle Mujin the most reliably. That's here and here, in the north of Pahari Bay. The reason they are especially good for Magical Mujin is that Floatree Groves regularly spawn in both areas. This is also where two perfect solo hunting spots are located. Let's check out the Thorny Ticket one first. As you can see here, there is a small platform with a few trees. The key here is that Mujin can't escape from it. The same goes for this spot, here, to the northwest of Statue Garden. It's even smaller and not as reliable as the first, but for solo hunters, both are worth checking out. There might be a few more areas like this around, but these are our favorite spots. If you find an isolated platform like this, begin by chopping all trees on it. Of course, you need to get lucky with either a magical Mujin that's already patrolling there or one that's hidden in a tree. If not, zoning in and out of Bahari Bay or logging in and out of the game can help to get different spawns. If you found one or more, when you chop down all the medium and large trees on the platform, it will prevent the Mujin from hiding again, and the isolated area prevents them from escaping. This allows you to take out all the Mujin at your own pace, either solo or with others. You can even use cheaper arrows without special effects, you will just need a few more of them. Try and hit the invisible Mujin by listening or following their invisible outline. This, of course, is also a great tactic for solo hunting Mujin in general, but it's particularly useful for the magic version. Since the two locations shown often have flow groves as mentioned, and seeing chasing regular Mujin into flow trees turn them into blue bristle Mujin, we sometimes come across 5-6 magic Mujin in a single tree. If you hunt together with others and haven't chopped the trees the Mujin were hiding in, don't forget to land at least one hit or a miss in close range of them in order to get loot. Even if you're in a group, you won't get loot unless you participated in the hunt. Before we wrap up, let's quickly touch on two accomplishments that are related to Blue Bristle Mujin. The first one is called Mujin Hunter and requires you to have hunted all three types of Mujin. Regular, Banded and Blue Bristle. Once completed, you will get some renown, but most importantly, a mounted Mujin trophy that you can display in your home. The second accomplishment is a little bit more challenging. When hunting Blue Bristle Mujin, there is a chance for them to drop a Blue Bristle Mujin main, and even rarer, a starred version of it. If you count yourself lucky to get the starred Blue Bristle Mujin main, it will complete the accomplishment Main of the Hour. Sadly, while this is a rather epic accomplishment, it only rewards you with renown. While there aren't many uses for Blue Bristle Mujin mains yet, they can be used as gifts when leveling your friendship with some villagers, and are sometimes also one of their weekly ones. And that's it for this guide, 
We hope you found it helpful and we wish you the best of luck on your Blue Bristle Mujin hunt. If you enjoy our content, please don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment.